When That'll Be The Day came out in 1957, the Crickets became the number one rock and roll band in the world. They were the first band to be completely self-contained, writing and playing and producing and recording their own material, just like the Beatles. In fact, the Beatles said they got the idea for their name from the Crickets. After Buddy Holly's death in 1959, the Crickets continued a career that spanned 30 years and millions of records. It's appropriate we start our show tonight with the original American rock and roll band. Jerry Allison, Joe B. Malden, and the newest member, Gordon Payne. Ladies and gentlemen, the Crickets. I'm gonna take two weeks, I'm gonna have a Peggy Sue And you know why I feel me without Peggy My Peggy Sue Well, I love you, gal, yes, I love you, foolish It's all right, let people know About the dreams and wishes you wish in the night when lights are low Well, all right, well, all right We live and love to all I want to be You're going to give your love to me Love to last just one day Love, love will fade away Through my hair, come along and be my party doll. Come along and be my party doll. Come along and be my party doll, and I'll make love to you. 
That's what haunts me What to do What to do to keep from feeling lonely Walk you Peggy Sue With my love so very true Oh Peggy My Peggy Sue <laughs> Well I love you gal I want you Peggy Sue Oh well I love you gal I thought the world could say that you Oh what I meant for me When I die, well, you give me all your love and all your turtle dove and all your hopes and kisses and your money too. Oh, well, you said you love me, baby. You tell me, baby, that someday we'll love you. Well, that will be the day when you say goodbye. Yeah, that will be the day when you make me cry. You say you're gonna leave. You know it's a lie, cause that'll be the day when I die. When I die, well, when you the child is dark, he shot it at your heart. So if we ever part, then I leave you. You said hold me and you can't help me for you. That someday will I be blue? Well, that will be the day when you say goodbye. Yeah, that will be the day when you make me cry. You say you don't believe. You know it's a lie. We're going to get Jerry to sing you one of your old rock and roll favorites, Summertime Blues. I'm going to raise a fuss, I'm going to raise a holler. How about a working all summer just to try to pull a dollar? Well, I call my baby, try to get a date. Boss said, no dice, son, you gotta work late. Sometimes I wonder what I'm gonna do, but there ain't no cue for a summertime blue. I'm gonna take two weeks, I'm gonna have a fun vacation. I'm gonna take my problem to the United Nations. Well, I call my congressman and he said, quote, Son, but you're too young to vote. Sometimes I wonder what I'm gonna do, but there ain't no cure for the summertime blue. And my mama and papa told me, son, you gotta make some money. If you're gonna use a car to go around next to me. Well, I didn't go to work till the boss I was sick. Now you can't. Car, cause you didn't work a little. Sometimes I wonder what I'm gonna do, but there ain't no cure for a summertime blue. Jerry Allison on Gopher. Toby Mo 
calling on me. This one about Jerry's first ex-wife, Peggy Sue. If you knew Peggy Sue, then you'd know why I feel me without Peggy. My Peggy Sue. Oh, well, I love you, gal. Yes, I love you, Peggy Sue. Oh, Peggy Sue. Oh, Peggy Sue. Oh, how my heart yearns for you. Oh, Peggy. Oh, my Peggy Sue. Oh, well, I love you, gal. Yes, I love you, Peggy Sue. Peggy Sue. Peggy Sue. Pretty, 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 pretty Peggy Sue. Oh, Peggy. Oh, my Peggy Sue. Oh, 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 Pretty, pretty Peggy Sue, oh, oh Peggy, my Peggy Sue, oh, 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 We have three records going right now, and uh, of course the first one was That'll Be The Day, the yes, first one we released, one. and uh, then we have a new one out by the Crickets called Oh Boy and Not Fade Away. Joe Malden, he plays bass, and uh, Jerry Allison plays drums. We sure had a lot of fun there in a short time. We, we also, when we weren't working like doing jobs or in the studio or something we spent an awful lot of time together just hanging out say in the car or over at one of us one of our houses and uh, just picking playing things oh yeah that was, it was a perfect situation because we were doing what we liked and and uh we didn't have anything to go by like know what we we're supposed to do and not supposed to do and uh you know so well, heck why don't we try to write some songs while we were practicing we just sit around and say somebody have an idea and just fool with it back and forth and and, or maybe somebody would have a, come up with an idea that they'd been thinking of for a few days and have a verse written, and uh, then everybody would work on it. Our buddy came up with the idea to write That'll Be The Day because they'd been to see the movie The Searchers that day. And uh, then, like on Well All Right, uh, Little Richard, uh, when we were performing with him at the Brooklyn Paramount, was all the time saying, well, all right. and. Uh, so, you know, it suddenly that was a great phrase to write a tune to. J.I. and, J and uh, Buddy got together and uh, one night and they were talking about what to name the group and they said, would they like the spiders? And so they said, insects, that'd be good. So that's really how the name the crickets came. They said, insects, huh, the crickets. Buddy gave me a feeling that I could be myself and do what I wanted to do because it looked like he was doing what he wanted to do. Joe B reminded me of something when he was talking about uh, like not being inhibited because Buddy, like if we were uh, like practicing in my in my folks' living room or uh, just anywhere in in the garage where we happened to be practicing. I mean, he might jump around like Elvis Presley and being dead serious, not being silly, just because he felt like doing that, like putting on a show just during a rehearsal. You know, I mean, he wasn't ever sitting around going, you know, just really drug. He was, you know, he was he really felt like rocking and rolling. We all decided to move to New York. And uh, we even called Norman, Norman Petty back in Clovis, our manager, and uh, and told him that Joe B and I flew home, and Buddy had his car up there, and he drove home. And Joe B and I went over to Clovis in the meantime, and Norman said, I don't think you want to move to New York. And he actually, uh, Joe B and I were pretty uh, wishy-washy at the time, but anyway, that's when you know Norman said, oh, you, you guys ought to stay down here. And so we ended up staying down there. That was a big, and we sort of, I sort of didn't want to move to New York anyway. And get, and I'd just gotten married, and Buddy just gotten married. And like you said, things weren't quite like they had, it, you know, wasn't fun hanging out together all the time. 
that was definitely a low point. Oh, one of the high points, like Waylon calling about uh, in 1978, sometimes 78, and saying, hey, you want to go on the road for a couple of days? We were on the road for about five years with Waylon and got mixed up with Gordon. He started sitting in and playing with the crickets. And uh, it's sure fun to me that because all that stuff had happened back then and uh, that we can go out and have fun and play rock and roll music now. This next guy is a personal hero of mine. He literally grew up with the legend of Buddy Holly. They shared the same hometown of Lubbock, Texas, so the Holly influence was everywhere. He was a singer, songwriter, guitar player. Buddy Holly was king, and Joe Ely is the keeper of the faith of that rockin' legacy. Here's Joe Ely and the Crickets. Yeah! I grew up in, I grew up in Lubbock, Texas. I grew up listening to these guys. It's good to be up here playing with them. The dreams and wishes you wish In the night when lights are low Well, all right, well, all right We live and love with all our might Well, all right, well, all right Lifetime love will be all right Take this joint.
live in the hearts and souls of everybody here forever. Thank you. If you were alive in the past couple of decades, your consciousness bears the stamp of this next man's music. Original, joyous rock and roll with a sound that's distinctly his own in songs that become our hymns. He joins us now for his tribute to the sound from Lubbock, Texas that changed the course of popular music forever. Here's John Fogarty. Break 
I'm really happy to be part of this, but he was a great big influence on me and the guys in that band way back when. When I was a little bitty baby, my mama would rock me in the cradle in them old cotton fields back at home. It was down in Louisiana just about a mile from Texarkana in them old cotton fields back home. Now when them cotton balls get rotten, you can't pick very much cotton in them old cotton fields back home. It was a down in Louisiana just about a mile from Texarkana in them old cotton fields back at home. Sing when he was five years old. I, I taught him to sing a song, 
program one time and he sang a long song all the way through. He was real good. He was, really had the talent. But he didn't care about the violin much and uh, he was on one of the shows with me and Travis. We was on some shows, uh, amateur shows and stuff. And we put grease on his bow so he wouldn't make any noise. <laughs> but we won that night. I think it was on account of Buddy because he was so cute. I did teach him basics basics on the guitar and that uh, more or less started him out but he far surpassed me in later years he and the guys he sang with jerry allison and joe b malden they were not very popular with school teachers <laughs> <laughs> they sang a little bit uh, uh risky songs and <laughs> they, they don't seem risky now they were on a school program one day and i was there the whole school and uh, and they sang about their teacher. I forget now what it was. It was... <laughs> it was too old to cut the mustard. Too old to cut the mustard. Uh -huh. she's, she's too old to cut the mustard anymore. And they were really shocked, you well, know. Well, the schools were changing at that time quite a bit, too. Everything was changing. Maybe, baby, I'll have you. Maybe, baby... I'd start writing a little song. He'd come along, pick it up, and say, what's this? And he'd carry it on off with him, and he'd kind of rearrange it and add to it. He saw it, and he says, what's that? And I said, that's the song I'm writing for you. He said, let me see it. And it was titled, Maybe Baby. So he finished it up. I just wrote the title. <laughs> the Arthur Murray Dance Party presented Buddy Holly and the Crickets in late 1957. This rare film is courtesy of Dick Clark's Best of Bandstand Home Video. Now, if we're ready for our rock and roll specialist, we have... Buddy, Holly, and the Cricket. I first met Buddy when I was working at Southern Music Publishing Company. I was a uh, receptionist and also uh, the interesting part was that I used to mail the uh, demos to the radio stations. So um, when he came in that day, um, he had an interview with Maury Deutsch and uh, I actually didn't know who he was. I never heard of Buddy Holly at that time. Right away, they started flirting with me. They, the three of them started, you know, trying to get my attention. And um, I just, you know, trying to be nice. But anyway, Buddy says, well, guys, step aside. She's going to go out with me. So we had lunch, and from there he said, well, how would you like to go? And, and I have to buy some uh, strings for my guitar. Would you walk with me? And I said, well, I don't have that much time, but if it's not too far, then I'll walk with you so um, that's what I did and while we were going there he asked me for dinner and during the course of the dinner we were talking about different things and all of a sudden he came and said well I have to go on tour tomorrow and I wouldn't have time to come back and see you but I certainly would like uh, to find out if you would marry me and all of a sudden I said, well, my aunt was right. These people are crazy. I mean, for this guy to ask me off the bat like that, I'd like me and I to get married. I said, well, okay. I said, I think I'll follow him. So I said, okay, um, tomorrow will be all right. I went to Lubbock and got married at his house with his minister. The uh, honeymoon was a very strange one from the beginning because uh, Jerry 
one of the uh, crickets uh, has just got married before uh, Buddy did, and his wife, uh, Peggy Sue, um, came along into our honeymoon uh, plans, and uh, they wanted to, for us to be together. And uh, that's what they did. They came along, and we went all, the four of us went to Acapulco. I like all of Buddy's songs. They were different. Each one of them was different. And uh, that's one of the things that people notice in Buddy's music, that none of his songs are the same. And, uh, uh, but there was one song that Buddy always uh, dedicated to me and that I really, really fell in love with his true love ways. Just you know why. Why? You know, I found out how people loved him and um, how much they loved his music. And it's a consolation because, you know, in my, in my mind, and I'm sure of it, the rest of the family, you know, he, in a way you could say he didn't die for nothing because actually when he died, he was on tour doing what he really loved the most, performing. And uh, so I, you know, to me, it, it's, uh, it's something that in a way I, I feel like I'm carrying on what he left. It's interesting how everything moves in cycles. Today's hot new artists sound as hard and traditional as Hank Williams, after all them urban cowboys. And rockabilly keeps rearing its head. There's a group on today's scene whose uh, harmonies are called the female version of the Everly Brothers. They're part of country music's new wave, and their roots go back to the days of Buddy Holly. Let's welcome the sweethearts of the rodeo. I should have reconsidered all those things I said I do. So now I'm changing all those changes that I made when I left you. rockers have led a musical back to the roots movement. This guy first started making waves in 1981 when his band, the Stray Cats, started a rockabilly revival in the U.S. He's gone on to other things since, including playing the role of Eddie Cochran in the movie La Bamba. 
but he's at his best when he's playing basic rock and roll. Here's Brian Setzer.
When it comes to rock and roll's pioneers, our next guest ranks right up at the top. He's one of the world's real good human beings, Tennessee born and bred. He was part of the incredible Sun Records stable that included Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis, Johnny Cash, Roy Orbison, and Charlie Rich under one roof. But this man had the big one, and it's a rock and roll standard. Mr. Blue Suede Shoes, Carl Perkins. <laughs> real honored that we were asked to come down and be a part of what I know is going to be a great, great show in honor of one of the greatest guys that I ever knew in the music business. Whoa. Buddy Holly will never leave us. <laughs> well, it's one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, now go back, go Find my name all over the place. Do anything you wanna do. But I'm out, baby, they offer my shoes. And don't you ever want to lose weight? Do anything that you want to do But I'm a baby now off of my shoes Don't you There was a blue gray shoe Well, you can do anything But off of my blue gray shoe Yes, Mr. Santa 
Buddy and I were friends right off. I liked him, and I think he liked me. Well, I know he did, yeah. And uh, he um, he loved music, you know. That was a, the greatest thing in his life, and he was always that way. You know, he was uh, I always refer to him as like an upper. He was always up and always laughing and always cutting up. I, uh, I only saw Buddy mad about once, you know. But I never saw a negative side of him. I never did. And uh, he laughed at himself, you know, like the hiccuping thing, you know. He would laugh about that, and he always, uh, he laughed about the, uh, uh, well, all right. I loved that song by him, you know. And he always told me it was a hillbilly in me, you know. But, you know, he, he liked all kinds of music, not just rock and roll or, or rockabilly music. And um, he had some great ideas. He was thinking all the time. Buddy it was the first person, you know, that uh, really had faith in my music and me as a singer and as an entertainer enough to do something about it, you know. He, uh, he, uh, he tickled me, you know, I mean, like, uh, he, when he recorded, he produced my first record that I ever cut, Jolie Blonde and When Zen Stops, you know. His music was timeless. You can listen to those records right now and, and really, I mean, you listen to, uh, I guess it doesn't matter anymore, you know. It's wonderful, you know, it's still great. And you can still feel his energy and everything in the, in the music. Heartbeat, why do you miss when my baby kisses me? Some of the recording sessions that we had uh, with the boys, I wasn't always in here. Sometimes I was out working in the yard or doing other things, and I'd be called into the studio to play on something. But uh, it was real relaxed. Uh, Norman would just... Uh, uh, go over the numbers with the boys and they'd decide what they were going to do. Most of our sessions were into the wee hours of the morning um, because the boys uh, would be maybe in Lubbock and uh, they would come over and uh, uh, Norman would uh, record them at night. They looked like, sort of like farm boys. Uh, they didn't look like they would be musicians to me and uh, um, of course that doesn't mean anything but uh, I just didn't expect what came out of them when I heard them, and uh, uh, especially Buddy. He was really a natural acting person. He didn't put on any kind of an act. Even after he got to be a star, he was still the same old Buddy that I knew. There were many instruments in here. In fact, all of these instruments have been used on the session. They're the original ones. But of course, my favorite is the uh, Celeste. Uh, which uh, I was able to play on Buddy's Every Day. Every day seems a little longer Every way love's a little stronger Come 
what may do you ever long for true love from me our next guest is one of the originals who along with elvis fats domino chuck berry jerry lee and buddy holly introduced rock and roll music to the world in the 1950s he was a close friend of buddy's let's welcome the gypsy man buddy knox and the ricochets Hey, this is for the old rockers we got around here. We got a few of them, baby. <laughs> well, all I want is a party talk. To come along and make it when I feel it wild. To be able to have been a two and five. Got a fingers up through my hair. Come along and be my party doll. Come along and be my party doll. Come along and be my party doll. And I'll make love to you. I'll make love to you. A gal walking down the street A kind of look a lot of love to me She had blonde hair and eyes blue Baby, I have a party with you Come along and be my party doll Come along and be my party doll Come along and be my party doll And I'll make love to you I'll make love to you Well, I saw a gal walking down the street A kind of look a lot of love to me She had blonde hair and eyes blue Baby, I have a party with you Come along and be my party doll Come along and be my party doll Our Steven! Every man's gotta have a party doll To be with him when he's feeling wild To be ever looking in a two and five Run a thing through the food with his hair Run a thing through the food with his hair Come along and be my party doll Come along and be my party doll Come along and be my party doll And I'll be love to you And I'll be love to you One more time Tonight. On February 3rd, 1959, a 15-year-old boy from North Dakota was hired to take Buddy Holly's place the day after the plane crash. To this day, the music of Buddy Holly has had a special meaning for him. Here's Bobby V and the Ricochets. I'd like to do uh, three songs right now that are among my favorites. These are three of the last songs that Buddy Holly recorded. <laughs> what to do, crying, waiting, hoping, and learning the game. 30 years later. doesn't want me That's what haunts me What to do What to do to keep from feeling lonely Want her only What to do Crying Waiting, hoping she'll come back. I just can't seem to get her off my mind. Crying, waiting, hoping she'll come back. Maybe someday soon things will change and she'll be mine.
but that's untrue. He's gonna turn in the game. When you love her and she doesn't love you, you're only learning the game. When she says that you're the only one she never loved, then you find that you are not the one she's thinking of. Feeling so sad and you're all alone and blue. You're only learning the game. Thank you. 